Now, I have immense respect for farmers. Farming in Kenya is certainly not for the faint of hearts. One has to deal with so many variables, the seed, the fertilizer, labor, market prices, and then you have the unpredictable weather patterns while preparing your land for the next season. The rain suddenly appear and then disappear again before the season itself begins. But the one variable I'll bet the farmers in Akuru County never thought they would have to deal with would be a ridiculous directive from the government. You see, last week, the county commissioner announced a ban on maize farming from February all the way up to December. Reason? Insecurity. Let me explain. So there's been insecurity in Joro sub-county for some time now, particularly the areas of Nesuit, Ndosua, Mariashoni, Sigotik, and Misipe. So the security officials uh, have been battling the criminal elements except for one challenge. You see, they say the maize stocks provide a good hideout for young men who then use the vast plantations as a base from which to attack. They say the high-growing maize crop and the vastness of the plantations has posed a challenge and that they're trying not to use excessive force and so have had to put in the ban, but only as a temporary measure, they say. What's more, not only have they banned maize farming, but they've also said that if you are found planting maize, and I quote, utakuwa mepatikana na hatia ya kukiuka marufuku hii. End quote. So now this is not just a ban, but the growing of this crop has been criminalized. Residents of these areas have, as one would expect, strongly disagreed with the ban. You see, this is a no-brainer. The residents of this area cannot now feed themselves. In addition, the maize is also a cash crop and so earns the money to feed their families and take their children to school. Now what are they to do? Also, because this ban came just as they were already beginning to prepare their land and their seed and have already incurred expenses doing so. So simply telling them to plant other crops is rather unfortunate. But folks, listen, this is absolute madness. Are we to believe that in this day and age, the police in Akuru have miserably failed to contain insecurity, that they now resort to banning agriculture? Really? How does that even sound, that criminals hide in maize farms? You ban the growing of maize? So what's next? You ban buildings with basements, as these can also provide hideouts for thieves? If they use vehicles to escape, are you also going to ban cars from entering this area? What about the oxygen they breathe as they attack residents? And the shoes which help them to run around the villages, will you ban those too? That for its failure, the government is now criminalizing law-abiding farmers who are simply trying to fend for their families? Folks, we are too technologically advanced, at least I hope so, to be this unimaginative. We have intelligence bodies. Indeed, the county commissioner says they have intelligence that there will be a flare-up of violence around June. If we cannot find criminals in Nakuru County in maize plantations, then how, for instance, do we hope to find terrorists in Boni Forest or in Somalia? How are we able to find faceless, nameless criminals robbing banks and plying all their evil activities on the World Wide Web? We live in a digital era. We identify voters using biometrics. We're putting in place a Huduma number, which is supposed to be a great advancement, you know, single source of truth. The president, in fact, recently showcased young Kenyans making drones, superior weapons, geomapping systems. Plus, we have recently launched a digital occurrence book at police stations, and we've also digitalized land records. But alas, we cannot find criminals hiding in a maize plantation? This so-called ban reeks of lack of imagination and smacks of administrative overreach. It is bereft of the basics of science. It is nonsensical, ill-conceived, and as mindless as it is illegal. Where is due process? Where is the Gazette notice of this ban? You see, a tangazo written on a piece of paper on behalf of the chief is exactly what the 2010 constitution did away with. The colonial era lawmaking powers of the chiefs are now history. They just won't do. Not today. The government should just do its job and leave the farmers alone. And that is my take tonight.